and it, it I do it, it expressly talked about very very clearly talked about uh, protecting whistleblowers, and this is a big part of what he was running on. What do you think happens when you get in office? You have, I mean, I'm a fan of the way Obama communicates. I'm a, I'm a fan of what he represents as a president. He was just so so eloquent and such a great statesman, and everyone had so much hope for what he was going to do once he got into office. But his administration was one of the worst for whistleblowers ever. What do you think happens when you get in there? I mean, do you think it's like the Bill Hicks bit where they show you a, an angle of the Kennedy assassination that you've never seen before, and then they ask you, are there any questions? You know, like... Right. <laughs> what I mean, I don't want to, you know... I, I don't want to be like too. I don't want to be too maximalist in that in like the conspiracy theorizing. But I'll just give you a quick uh, vignette, like a little anecdote, a little anecdote, just to like introduce my view of this, which is in January of 2017, days before Trump was inaugurated, Chuck Schumer went on the Rachel Maddow show. You can find this clip; it's online. It's amazing. And Trump had been posting a bunch of shocking stuff on Twitter, mocking the CIA for having gotten Iraq so wrong, which they did, because he was angry at them because they were essentially leaking against his administration before it even began and were blaming Russia for his election victory, which he felt was delegitimizing him. So he started criticizing the CIA. And and Chuck Schumer went on Rachel Maddow's show and she asked him about it and he said, Morality and ethics aside of doing that, for a hard-nosed businessman like Trump claims to be, you have to be the biggest imbecile in the world to stand up to and challenge and attack the intelligence community because nobody has more weapons to destroy you if you do that than they do. And it was kind of like a throwaway line, but in reality, it was one of the most important and candid admissions of how the government actually works that has ever been broadcast, certainly on that shitty network, but really like on TV ever, because he was essentially saying there's this permanent power faction, which Dwight Eisenhower warned about, Mm. you know, in 1961 when he was leaving the presidency, called it the military industrial complex. But there's this power, this permanent power faction that is much power, more powerful than the officials we elect and who stay in Washington and exert power regardless of the outcome of elections, who you can't challenge or impede because they'll destroy you. Um, and so, you know, Obama, despite the lofty rhetoric and like the visionary posturing, which I also don't want to say fell for, but was kind of inspired by in 2007, um, has always been a very shrewd pragmatist. You know, he's always known how from his time at Harvard when he became the the editor-in-chief of the Law Review, how to appease institutional authority. And so I think when he got into Washington, he, he, he thought to himself, I have these ambitious agenda items like healthcare and other things, and I only can get them done if I'm not going to be provoking the ire of the CIA, which is why, for example, he also said during the campaign he would consider prosecuting the, the people in the CIA who tortured de- helpless detainees and then quickly said, I'm going to give them all immunity because he didn't want to be at war with the CIA. So I think that's part of it, right? Like when someone like Julian Assange someone like Edward Snowden leaks these secrets. It's not Obama necessarily, but it's the CIA, the Justice Department, the NSA, the FBI demanding, saying this is our priority. You need to punish these people or we're going to have an endless series of leaks. So part of it is just that kind of calculation, like a very pragmatic calculation. Like, look, I'm, I may be president, but I'm not actually the only one who wields a lot of power in this town. And then I think the other part of it is when you become president, you're sitting in that chair and you have like kind of the unprecedented incomparable power of the US government at your disposal if you think if you believe too much in your own righteousness if you believe that you're a benevolent and noble person using that power for benevolent and noble ends then you start to believe that anyone who stands in your way and is impeding you is somebody who inherently is ill-intentioned or at least engage in misconduct that ought to be sanctioned and punished. And I think that kind of became part of Obama's worldview too. Like it's one thing to champion whistleblowers when they're exposing George Bush and Dick Cheney's secrets, but when they're exposing Eric Holder and 
Barack Obama and Joe Biden and John Kerry and Hillary Clinton's secrets, it seems a lot less benevolent to somebody from Obama's, you know, sitting in his place. It is amazing.